What is up, Humanoid Nation? Today, I'm going to be talking about the 10 movies I hate, but everybody else loves. Just letting you know, this is just my opinion. Whatever you guys' opinion are, just tell me down in the comments section below if you agree with me or disagree with me. I'm not going to fight with you. That's just my opinion. Like, I'm going to... Constructive criticism. Why not? But anyways, let's start this. Number 10. Horrible bosses. Oh, this fucking movie. Oh. Gotta say one thing though. This movie definitely lives up to its name. It is indeed fucking horrible. Where do I begin with this goddamn piece of shit? It's not funny at all. Jason Bateman's in this. I swear he could have made this work, but I like Jason Bateman. He's funny, but he even couldn't save this movie. You know who else couldn't save this movie? Donald Sutherland. Even he knew this movie was a piece of crap. And he killed himself. Well, he didn't kill himself. He died off screen. You see Donald Sutherland in the beginning. Then he just walks off the screen. And then car crash. Boom. He's dead. Even he wants to be out of this pathetic movie. Because even he knew it was a piece of shit. Dying off screen. Yeah. That's how you go. Another thing that really annoyed me about this movie. Is one person. And that's Charlie Day. I cannot stand this guy. This guy has such an annoying voice and he swears he's funny. And who am I to talk about annoying voices? My voice sucks compared to his. But God, his voice is worse. I had to listen to this shit. They call me hell. They call me Stacy. That's not my name. That's not my name. That's not my name. That's not my name. They call me hell. Yeah, now imagine me in the theater just listening to that shit and me trying not to kill a motherfucker in the movie theater. I don't know how I survived this movie. I have no idea how. Oh wait, I know how because of Jennifer Aniston. Yeah, Jennifer Aniston and Jamie Foxx who is pretty redeemable in this movie. He's the only good character in this movie that I enjoyed watching. But other than that, Jennifer Aniston is the reason I solely saw this movie because she's freaking hot and this is the first time I've seen her play this kind of role. Other than that, the rest of these characters can go fuck off. I don't give a fuck about them. Anyways, on to number nine. Number nine. Avatar. Can we just say that this movie is just a CGI crap fest? Don't get me wrong. The scenery is amazing. I'm not bitching about that. The thing I'm bitching most about is the goddamn story. Smurfs plus Pocahontas plus Dance of the Wolves all combined into one. I'm the only one that's disturbed by the fact that when What's-His-Face goes into his avatar and uses his tail as a connector and connects himself into the other animals, it seems like bestiality to me. Watch that scene again when he connects to the animals. I think that's the reason why I didn't like this movie because it seemed like they were like harboring bestiality up in this bitch. Other than that, it yeah, has some amazing scenery, but the story was just shit, and I've seen this a thousand goddamn times, and they solely relied on CGI to help save their asses. I would like to add that I fell asleep in this movie an hour in, and when I woke up, the movie was still going. And I'm going like, fuck this, I'm out. But I had to stay, because I was with people. Number eight. Super Trooper beams are gonna blind me. I'm gonna get a lot of hate just for putting that song on for this movie. I don't see what the fucking deal about this movie is. Everywhere I go, people say like Super Troopers is the most amazing comedy gold movie out there. No, it isn't. The only time I ever laughed in this movie was the beginning for this scene. <laughs> That was the only time I laughed, and everything else after that, everything went downhill because of the horrible comedy and writing. I did not like one bit of any of these characters, I did not give a shit what was going on, and people tell me to go watch it again. I watched this fucking thing six times. Clear conscious too, because the first time I saw this I was in a bad mood, I don't know why I was just in a bad mood. Other times I was a clear headed, so I went to go see it again. Rented it, borrowed it from a friend, and each and every time I found it boring because I just did not laugh after the beginning. Broken Losers is not that 
great, man. The only movie I ever enjoyed from them is The Slamming Salmon, which I have no idea why. It's just spooked me. I have no idea. Maybe it's because I used to work at Mickey D's in the fast food restaurants back in the day. And I completely understand what the fuck they're doing. But other than that, I enjoy the movie. Other movies from the Broken Lizard Club guys, I do not like. Club Dread, oh my fucking god, that was shit. Beer Fest, my god. But Super Troopers, people are telling me Super Troopers is amazing, the best. Fuck off was that shit. Number seven, Top Gun. Yeah, I said it. Top Gun is shit. Why is it shit? Because I was just completely bored by it. You would think a movie about flying jets in Top Gun would be something to look at. Jets going everywhere, but no. Nothing. It's all boring. And also I find it funny that it's a story about a gay man trying to deal with his sexuality, trying to figure out if he should go straight or gay. And it doesn't help that Val Kilmer, whatever his character's name is, Goose, I think, is trying to lead him on, trying to seduce him in the entire movie. You got... Come on, you know Goose was trying to seduce Maverick. gay overtones in this movie, which I find absolutely hilarious. It gives me a hard on. At the end of Vietnam, that really don't tease me. I want it now. I had it. Oh, oh. Damn it. Damn it. Hey, I want the money. Besides gay overtones, because that's all what the whole movie's about is like Tom Cruise. In the movie, not Tom Cruise himself, but his character is trying to deal with his sexuality to figure out what the fuck if he's straight or gay. Like that one scene where he goes to Kelly McGillis' house and he asks her to take a shower and he basically fucks off and goes home and Kelly McGillis has his look on her face like, what the fuck just happened? Yeah, what the fuck did just happen? And there's only one person that can truly tell you what this movie's all about, and that's by this man himself. Got Maverick. All right, he's on the edge, man. He's right on the fucking line. All right, and you got Iceman and all his crew. Right. They're gay. And they are, they represent the gay man. Right. All right, and they're saying, go, go the gay way, go the gay way. He could go both ways. What about Kelly McGillis, right? Kelly McGillis, she's, she's, she's heterosexuality. Quentin Tarantino, you are always amazing. Onwards to the next one. Number six, 2001 A Space Odyssey. Oh, Jesus, this movie is over. Rated. Oh my god! Just because it's Stanley Kubrick. Don't get me wrong, I love Stanley Kubrick. Full Metal Jacket, The Shining, Clockwork Orange. But fuck! 2001 A Space Odyssey is the most weirdest, boring, most fucking thing I've ever seen. So confusing. Starts out with a bunch of monkeys or apes or some kind of Neanderthal ape thing. Just fucking around and somewhere in bumfuck nowhere, throwing bones and this big piece of shit comes out of nowhere and suddenly you hear boom, 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 and the apes are going crazy for some reason, throwing bones in the air. All of a sudden you're in space, what the fuck? How did we go from that to space? And we go from space, and while we're in space, these people are trying to survive in this computer. Hal 9000 was the most awesome motherfucker in this movie. The best villain ever in any movie. I gotta admit it, he's the best villain ever. It's killing off these people just because. He's Skynet, he's self-aware. Skynet before it was Skynet. So Hal 9000's killing off people left and right because of reasons. And everybody loves this movie. I don't know why. I don't see the point in this goddamn movie. It's so long and boring at the time. There's no dialogue, which I understand there's not supposed to be dialogue in space when they're actually in the space. Like, it's all silent and shit, but I'm just sitting there. It's like, oh my god. And I love the dialogue from Stanley Kubrick. He's amazing, but fuck this thing right here. I couldn't take it anymore. And then the ending. 
Spoiler alert. But anyways, you've seen this movie. If you know what I'm talking about, it's like... It starts out him in, like, killing it off how, how somehow. Killing it off the battery supply. I think it takes some shrooms or something. And it goes off into the deep f vortex of something somewhere. Winds up at this old... Winds up as an old man in a bed, stands up and doesn't know what the fuck is going on. And I'm just sitting there, it's like, what just happened? How the fuck do we go from apes in bumfuck nowhere to space? Now we're in the future where he's an old man. I'm so confused. Number five, the English patient. One person can describe how this movie is. It's too long. Quit telling your stupid story about the stupid desert and just die already. <laughs> die! Shh. Elaine, you don't like the movie? I hate it! Amen, Elaine. Amen. Enough said. Nothing else to say. Number four. Gladiator. The last time I saw it was when I was a teenager. Now I'm a full-grown adult. And I saw it a couple of months ago. I don't know what the fuck I saw in this movie, but goddamn the stupidity of this movie. Russell Crowe, the whitest Spaniard I ever seen from Spain. Really? But come on, I just couldn't get around that. That Russell Crowe playing a Spaniard. How did I think? How did I not think about this before? Oh, and also the kid, whoever, like Jock Wing Phoenix's sister's son, has that Hanson hairstyle. Who the fuck had that Hanson hairstyle back in that time period? You look so out of place in this movie. Other than that, the whole movie is just dragged on and just dragged. That's all I gotta say, it's just dragged and it's like, not, just dragged, man, just dragged. Number three, Blade Runner. This movie, I swear to God, just gives me a goddamn headache. I like the visuals and shit, like Avatar. Just like Avatar, I like the visuals. Cause goddamn, the city, the future, and all everything else just looks amazing. It's a goddamn storyline that I just can't get into because like it fucking drags on. It's boring. Villain in this movie, the robot slash cyborg human does not know what the fuck he wants to do, and it's like the worst f end fight I ever seen. Like they're fighting in the rain at the p top of a building. It's chasing him after like a gremlin, and then it just ends because he goes like, "I'm dying! I'm dying!" Out of nowhere. And even before that, it's like I just did not understand what the fuck was going on. Seriously, can anyone tell me what the fuck was going on? Number two, the Born Identity series. Every goddamn one of them. Even the new one was Jeremy Renner, but let me explain that. That's why you're here. At first, I didn't like the Born trilogy because I thought it was Matt Damon's fault. I like Matt Damon, he's an amazing actor. He really is. But back then, when he did these things, I d thought that he could not pull off an action movie. Everything else, yes. But when he was doing Born Identity, he just sucked at it. And then the Born Legacy came out, and I thought, cool, Matt Damon's not in this. At least I can enjoy this one. Jeremy Renner's in this. I watched it. It sucked. The only reason I did not like the Born series because the goddamn shaking cam which just gives me fucking headaches and it just goes too weird half the time. Like shaky cam, all the shit. Like how would you like this to go into the theater and you have something go like this? Blah, blah, blah. Fix the camera. Having that every goddamn minute fucks with your head. That's all I'm gonna say. That's why I never liked the Born Identity series. Even though it's a spy movie, sort of like a spy, because he does. Yeah, he's a spy, isn't he? Because he can't remember what he is, but he's like a super spy. Even though I enjoy James Bond movies, I just couldn't get into this spy movie of this one. That's all I gotta say. I just couldn't get into it. Most because of the shaky cam. Number one, the Lord of the Rings trilogy. <sighs> this movie. This fucking movie. I mean these movies. These three fucking movies. Again, one person can only describe this goddamn trilogy. Fucking Hobbit movies were boring as hell. All it was was a bunch of people walking. Three movies of people walking to a fucking volcano. Even the fucking trees walked in those movies. Thank you, Randall. You are always amazing. And it's goddamn long too, and I agree with everything they say, like, 
And also, again, was Avatar. Along with Avatar, I fell asleep in this fucking movie. Back when Blockbuster was around. Remember Blockbuster Kids? No, not really? Okay. I rented this back when Blockbuster was around. Because I was excited because I forgot I, I didn't get the chance to see it in the theaters. So me and my cousin go to Blockbuster. We went to Lord of the Rings. We're all excited. We popped that movie gut in. I'm watching this thing. I'm bored already. Nothing's happening. They're talking, walking, walking, walking. And then I fall asleep. Later on, I'm awake and the movie's still going because it's goddamn eight hours long. One thing I couldn't stand is Elijah Wood as Pip or whoever the fuck he plays, Bobo, Bobo Baggins. Yeah, I like Elijah Wood. He's an amazing actor as well. But his character, po uh, his p character of Bobastic, Bombastic Baggins, just annoyed the crap out of me. He's like, oh my god, Jesus. Oh, and his psychic slash lover. Frodo? My god. Just wouldn't shut the fuck up. Oh, and a guy that would never shut up. The little gremlin motherfucker that always says, My precious, my precious. Gollum is his name. He's like the popular one, right? How is he popular? He's basically cracked out on trying to find the ring. He's like, I must get it, my precious. Give me my precious. I'll suck your dick for the precious. Feel sorry for that guy. You know, I just found him annoying because he just wouldn't leave you alone. Oh yeah, and the guy who plays Frodo's love interest, whatever his name is, the sidekick, the real actor, I can't remember his name. The guy from Encino Man. Remember Encino Man with Paulie Shore and Brendan Fraser? I forget his name. The main star, Shane West, Sean something something. I can't stand him as an actor. I just find him not that good. So besides him and bombastic Bart Baggins, just couldn't stand those characters along with Gollum the Crackhead. Lord of the Rings is just so too goddamn long and just wouldn't want to end. And we still got these Hobbit movies to come out, but I'm not watching those. Screw that. I've been through enough pain just watching Lord of the Rings. Anyways, what are your guys' opinion on this and what movies do you hate that everybody else loves? And next time, I will make a video about the movies I like, but everybody else hates. And that would be awesome too. So tune in next time. Take it easy, Humanoid Nation. Humanoid Freak Out. Bye.